Wow, cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mikhail, for the fantastic introduction. Uh, for some of you guys that were here in 2015, <laughs> you don't need the introduction. Uh, beer, wow, beer. Um, first of all, uh, great to be back, great to be here. New faces, some of my colleagues from the Philippines. Um, I just want to say thank you for you know, the opportunity to come back. Um, I've been a customer now of Frosmo with two companies uh, since around end of 2012. Where's Alex? I don't know. Yeah, is it 2012 or something? So, wow, a long time. So uh, some of the people I saw last year, uh, you know, they were thinking about it. And now they're customers. And now they're uh, you know, starting to get into the idea of uh, what Frosmo is all about, which for us is... Um, Know, as the, the company that I'm representing, it's all about well, pointing there, but it's essentially what's there. Hacking awesome and awesome customer experiences. Um, Mikhail mentioned about what you guys should be doing when you first start using Frosmo. The idea that um, you shouldn't try things too big. Uh, I kind of disagree with that. I, I like the idea to try things big, but the model that we have with Frosmo is that they do all the work and we give them I the ideas. So well, we basically say, work it out and just make it happen. So I like the idea of the, the big idea approach because one of the, 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 the key problems that we have in business is that um, for us to move forward, we have to eliminate big barriers. So these are cool. On that idea, I've got three simple things I want to go over today. The idea that, um, first of all, it's not an idea. Jeep Cherokees, specifically 1999 Jeep Cherokees, are the most amazing vehicles that you could ever own. It's 2016, so it's 17 years out of date, but you get one of those, you'll never regret it. The second thing is that 10x ideas from customers, the idea of getting big ideas from your customers. So speak to them, work it out. And I'm going to give you all a million dollar idea. You get a million dollars. You get a million dollars. Everybody gets a million dollars. But not, not the 1999 Jeep Cherokee. That's an Oprah thing. So I'm going to jump right into it. This is, this is actually my car. This is my car in Costa Rica. Um, as Michael said, I lived all over the world. I've traveled. I've done all sorts of crazy shit. In this car, unbelievable. So um, I'll tell you a little bit of a background about why this is awesome. And it goes to my personal life. I like to relate personal with business. So my wife's Jewish. And um, I, I'm sure you've seen my weird Italian name, but I'm actually Irish. So Irish, kind of rebellious people. You know, pairing up with a Jewish woman that's like a little bit neurotic, a little bit crazy. You know, it's not the most ideal partnership. So uh, we're coming home from a, a weekend trip uh, to the beach in Costa Rica. And um, Costa Rica is a pretty you know, sketchy place with earthquakes, uh, hurricanes, landslides, floods. I'll tell you about Philippines later, but uh, it's, uh, this is a starter. This is a warm up to Philippines. But uh, basically, um, we were coming back from the beach, rock slide. We're in a shitty little Toyota Starlet. I don't know if you know what a Toyota Starlet is. It's like the tiniest Toyota you can ever own. Two-wheel drive. <laughs> Massive rocks in front of us. No way forward. Um, so I had a fantastic conversation with my neurotic Jewish wife that you know, freaks out about absolutely everything. You know her, right, Jace? You know my wife? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and so the story went as follows. Um, literally getting out of the car, two people shifting rocks about, I don't know, yay size, like pretty big. Luckily, they were quite sort of rounded so we could roll them. But two people and nobody else behind us for maybe 40, 50 kilometers of uh, motorway, highway, whatever. Um, so we had to push these fucking big things off the road. And each boulder got smaller until we could get the shitty little starlet through. At the end of it all, um, the idea was like, screw this, we're buying a Jeep. So after we got through that road, back to uh, San Jose, Escazú, where we lived, this was the, our next big purchase, a 1999 Jeep Cherokee. And like from then on, you can see it's quite highly pitched. Those rocks just like, never had a problem ever since. But the idea I take from this is that the big rocks are representative of our biggest problems in business. And the Jeep's just a resource. It's a way to you know, combat those problems that we see every day. Um, I guess that's the life lesson. I just think back at this. It's a great time in my memory. 
And it's a great sort of idea of thinking about solving problems <laughs> for both business, life, and for our customers. So I'm moving on to the 10x idea. This is a, a Google thing. I think it's a bit hokey, to be honest, because you can't always do 10x ideas. One of their ideas was to put um, balloons in space that push the internet all around the world. Some guy gets paid a massive amount of money for coming up with those ideas. I don't think they've developed it, but you know, in concept, the idea is pretty cool. You know, come up with a big idea and chuck it out there and see if it can catch on. Um, electric cars, 20 years ago, now 2016. You know, it's starting to happen. So these ideas can be like something super small, like a very basic feature on your website, or they could be something massive, like why you started your company. And uh, when you started your company, Frosmo, I don't know, I mean, I've seen it change so much in four years, right? The point is that things change, so you have to be prepared and ready and pivot and you know, have those quick hips to do those quick sort of moves, left, right, you know? So it's important to uh, be prepared. But the ideas are better probably coming from your customers rather than a bunch of uh, dudes like me that, I'm in iGaming, which is casino, sports, poker, all that fun stuff. I've been doing it since uh, 2002. But if I put 10 of me in a room, I guarantee you that the output of those 10 people will be, in nowhere, will be nowhere near as productive as the output of 100,000 daily active users getting the, the input from them, the output, sorry. So this, this kind of remind, reminds me of my nan, my good old granny. So if you don't ask your customers, so we, I asked David from Hotjar yesterday about um, you know, how do we do these things, you know, how do we how do we work out what our customers want? So um, it's important to, uh, to talk to the people that spend money on your site, on your business and your, your software that you know, are your customers. Understanding sort of how to move your product to the right, sort of where it needs to be, like the market fit. Sort of, it's important. You're never gonna get that from your, uh, your marketing team, your, your customer service team, although you'll start to get ideas. Um, Problem solved is great PR. So if you can solve a customer problem, that's fantastic. I'm sure you've all seen that uh, thing on LinkedIn about the little kid that loses a piece of Lego and uh, Lego send him out this amazing little ninja go dude and the personalized letter. And the kid's all stoked and it's probably fake, but people are retweeting it and you know mentioning it. So solving customer problems is a fantastic thing to you know strive for. Um, but bear in mind that the customers you know, not always right. That old uh, saying that the customer's always right is a bit false, but you know, let's talk to them, work it out. So how to ask? So I, I, I basically asked David yesterday about this. Uh, it was kind of a loaded question. I knew he was gonna kick my ass over it and tell me to do work, son. But uh, the idea was that uh, you, know, you need to you know, put that time into speaking to y your customers. So how you can do that, like surveying, private beta, uh, feedback and uh, all those cute smiley buttons that you see at the airport. You know those shitty little buttons you see, uh, happy face, smiley face in between. They've just made you take off your shoes, your jacket, take your belt off, your plastic Swatch $25 watch. It pisses you off and like, of course you're going to hit the red button on the way through. But the main point is that you, know, you, you, you at least ask people how they're doing. You know, it's important. Um, so now you know all of this, you're starting to ask the questions. You know, the, the quantitative data is cool, it's actionable, you can measure impact. You make a change to something, you're like, oh, shit, did that, did that do anything? You know, did that problem get rectified? Is, did, is that segment of users actually making an impact to our business? But then the qualitative stuff is also equally awesome. Um, it allows you to apply fixes immediately. Somebody might tell you, um, you know, a key feature of your website is actually garbage. So, you know, you jump right in there and you fix it. Of course, this takes a little bit more time because the data is usually unstructured. So you gotta like wade through lots of sort of um, funky, amazing multilingual inputs. And uh, you know, it's not as easy as the check boxes that we were talking about yesterday. But it does give you an idea of what's crucially wrong with your product, your service. Um, it's kind of only awesome if you've only got a precise goal in mind. So. And when you ask that question, you have to be sure about you know, what you want to know from the customer. You have to be kind of direct about you know, what you want to hear from them, which is sometimes you just don't get anywhere close to it. So 
Um, the reality of um, testing and making improvements to your site is that most of it doesn't work. So in this whole cycle of planning, executing, measuring, optimizing, and redoing that again and again, it's like the, the snake eating its own tail, so to speak. And you're going to um, get pissed off and you basically most of your tests, most of your experiments aren't going to work. So the key is to really do this stuff and do this quickly. Um, I was talking about giving Frosmo all of the, uh, the burden of doing the work for us. Because, you know, we're dreamers, we're hackers, we, we don't want to have big dev teams. We don't want to have big marketing teams. We want to keep things lean. Um, I want to wake up at 3 a.m., put a note uh, in, like, uh, my phone, and then probably ship it off to somebody and say, do this for us, and, like, uh, it, you know, get that sort of idea going or work out how to do this, rather than, you know, let's sit around and strategize. I think the, the youth hostel guys, you've, you've got an amazing thing going on, and that's, that's equally going to give you amazing results. I just think that in a company of the, our size, we're several thousand people large. We've noticed that big things, big teams, big ideas don't get done very quickly. So short, quick bursts. Going back to the boulder idea, you know, getting those big boulders out of the way, that's our biggest problem. And move on to the next one until you can drive over it in your shitty little Toyota Starlet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to move past that now. I'm going to give you all a million dollar idea, the, uh, the Oprah thing. You're not getting the car, but you're getting a million dollar idea. And um, at the, the, the center of all of this, it's a boring registration form. So you've all seen like uh, registration form improvements like CRO, conversion rate optimization. I mean, it's, a, it's nothing new, but it, it starts with that at the center. So one of the things that's important when you've got all of this traffic coming to your website is that you know where it's coming from or else you can't do anything with it. So you've got to tag it up. You've got to make sure that the, the people that's coming to you, they're the right sort of people. You're spending your budget adequately and um, you know, you're not basically wasting time. Um, as well as that, I actually forgot what I was going to say the next thing, but um, the, the, the key thing is that, um, yeah, that's what it was. You have a finite amount of traffic. Like if you're in a competitive marketplace, I'm sure everybody out here has a competitor. Some have like multiple. That amount of traffic that you're going to get is going to be kind of burstable. It's going to increase, decrease over time. At some point, um, you're going to realize that uh, you're not actually able to massively increase that incoming traffic until you become the number one product or two, three, four product in the marketplace. In my industry, um, mine, I own it. <laughs> yeah, right. in, in our industry, uh, it's super ultra competitive. I think outside of porn, it's probably one of the most competitive uh, uh, businesses uh, in this, uh, in, out there. So um, you know, real, realizing that you know, we really have to take care of the people coming to our site, giving them personalized experience and a, a really cool sort of onboarding experience is crucial. So does anybody here speak Chinese? No? Oh, shit. I can't say what I'm going to say next then. <laughs> Anyway, forget about it. So th this is basically what our uh, version one um, uh, uh, registration form looked like. It's not for my current company because you know they're they're making improvements, but it's fresh. It's six months ago. <laughs> it's good data, good information. So it was a ridiculous form. Like we were expecting these guys to jump through hoops and then ultimately be educated and land on this. We were doing an amazing job of you know, tagging our incoming traffic with great parameters, feeding that into Site Catalyst, and also using that as they're sort of moving them through the next part of their journey. But ultimately, it looked like this, and this is horrific. This was, I look at this and it kind of, I don't know if I want to puke or if I want to uh, ask for a seat to sit down and contemplate life, or I don't know, but it's garbage. <laughs> and that's the Monty Python dude. None shall pass. <laughs> But the people that did make it through this showed intent. You know, they bought from us, idiots. Like, I don't know what was going on there, but they, they went through all this crazy crap. But we're, we were a Chinese company, so um, I'm sure I've told some of you guys I, I used to be a martial artist and stuff, you know? <laughs> but uh, you know, I thought it was appropriate to take a Bruce Lee quote. And uh, Bruce Lee, I think, was probably the inventor of lean and agile because uh, he actually came up with this quote. I just want to use the laser. <laughs> but uh, th this is, in essence, agile. This is lean right here. Hack away at the unessential. I want to go back. It's not very hard to hack away at this because this is garbage. But this is like my mantra for business. Like I try to keep things simple. 
and um, take a screenshot of that and remember it and use it in everyday business. So you'll, you'll go very far with it. Um, so version two, just to go back to uh, uh, more boring reg form stuff. I mean, we had a step one, step two, which is kind of shady. Don't do step forms, those are garbage. But uh, we did like simplify it. You can see there's a lot less input. You can see how shaky my hand is as well. Not very. <laughs> but um, simple information. Step one was designed to be, you know, get that crucial marketing information, get that stuff that you want to use to contact people. I have to look at it here because my eyesight's terrible, but email address, mobile phone, phone number, get their username, make a password. That fear of missing out timer was a separate experiment, but it actually improved the, the conversions. I'll talk more about conversion and revenue after because it's not just about the conversion. Obviously, we want to make money. Step two was uh, a little bit more information about the, the uh, KYC aspect because we do have a small amount of KYC. Um, yeah, that's all about security. But bottom line, we condensed it, we shortened it, we made it better. But ultimately, version three, this is what I strive for. It was just an email address and a phone number with a country code. And we did it a lot better than this. We detected the country and suggested their code. But the point being that we, you entered your email address, you entered your phone number, you hit create account, and you're on your way. You're literally, you're, you're into the system. So the, the awesome product of that was that we got to say goodbye to crappy carousels that were educating customers. Carousels are garbage. Put that into a Google search query. If you have them on your site, research why they're garbage and delete them. Um, it got rid of that. It got rid of excess form fields. We went from like 18 to like two. Um, we, sa we said hello to improved uh, interaction. So we, we were able to like talk more to the, the customer and the customer was able to talk more to us because of what we did next. So we, we, we basically incentivized the interaction with the customer. In our business, we, we give people money to join up. We give them like, you deposit money with us, you, you'll get a bonus. We actually threw that out the window and we started to incentivize the interaction. So when you claimed your account, when you entered that email address and that phone number, nothing happened. You just went to the next stage. You're inside the system. You've got more or less full access to it. But by claiming your account, you basically, when you're in the My Account stage, you say, this is my email. Send me an activation link. Goes to the inbox, click, boom, done. You get a, like a trinket, a bonus, something. This worked really well. The second part was um, we wanted you to com complete your profile. So give us your uh, address, provide customer, know your customer information. However, we did this at uh, point of sale. We didn't do it at, um, sorry, online point of sale when they make a purchase. We didn't do this you know, in the reg form because that's kind of redundant. They're not actually ready to make a decision or make a purchase. The third part was like we, we decided that security was a big issue. In China, there's a lot of counterfeit websites, a lot of like companies that rip you off and look like you. So we combated this by adding 2FA, two-factor authentication. So confirming your mobile, you get a code to the mobile, boom. Yeah, this is me. Enter the number. So the, the dialogue between the customer was a lot better. We had confirmed information for marketing purposes. This all was in our CRM, it's very clean data. Now along this journey, we also tagged incoming traffic. So you know, we were talking about how we measure impact of, of an experiment. So if this ran through this whole um, test, we tagged it very well. So we knew down the line that those customers came from this whole experiment. And we were off to the races. I'm a big Nintendo fan. He missed the one up there, by the way. <coughs> I don't know if anybody knows Mario Brothers, but he missed an opportunity to get an extra life. But at this point, uh, things started to go a bit crazy. We were literally, you know, hitting that star and running into all those Koopas and stuff. And uh, I would rather crush the Koopa and kick the shell, but, you know, whatever. Point is, we're, like, traveling at light speed now. Version 1 was that crappy site, that uh, crappy sign-up page that just didn't do anything. It was a massive failure. Version 2, not V1, fail. But that should be a V2. It was kind of sub-optimized compared to, compared to where version 3 was going to be. Version 3 was just amazing. Two interactions, uh, email, phone number, and off to the races, play Super Mario Brothers. Epic conversion, epic marketing data. And the results of it were just redonkulous. And Alex, th we're, this is true, right? 284%. So that's like kind of indicative of what we were doing in V1. 
And then V2 just had a slight increase and V3 was just, just crazy. So I don't want to just talk about conversion because obviously profitability is important for us. So as I said, we measured all of this. We, we ran sort of comparisons. We had our control groups set up. I said yesterday control groups are for pussies, but like, you know, <laughs> we want to like prove it as a business concept. But we increased the conversion that much. And then we also saw that a ridiculous amount of revenue produced from this. Um, that uh, boring basic funnel of unique visitors, registrations, paying customers, as we saw the jump down the funnel, you know, the, the increase in the conversion up top had a great increase down funnel. So it was a rip-roaring success, and we all sat around like crazy bearded uh, guys like this and just laughing our ass off. Took the rest of the week off. We'd just <laughs> done a crazy uh, uh, Angular uh, JavaScript uh, mobile H5 deployment, and you know, we were also doing all this other crazy stuff in the background. So this is it. We were just like having a party in, in Philippines, drinking beer, and everything's going really well. No. <laughs> I wish it, went, it ended well. So I personally hacked version 3 to make it work. Like I have a postgraduate software engineering background, but I'm in marketing. Thank, thank God for that. I mean, I was literally, I had no resources to do this, so uh, I was making it work. Um, I used my own visual web optimizer account on top of Frosmo because I didn't want them to see me use Frosmo to make these things work. Um, yeah. I don't think Alex knew about it, like all our account managers and stuff. Um, I used my own Hotjar account. Um, it was buggy and it was crap on all these weird Chinese browsers like um, uh, MaxFun and stuff, like stuff that you probably never heard of or don't want to hear about. But outside of Chrome and Firefox and you know Safari, Edge or IE, whatever, um, it just didn't work. So um, I guess uh, one of the things I went back up top, up to the hacking it, uh, made improvements to it, basically did uh, uh, browser uh, recognition to make sure that, you know, at least I can bring them through to make it work in those browsers. But then moving forward, it just, just failed, it just died. Uh, what happened? Well, the fraud team were pissed off because all these customers were signing up with um, 123 Carlos address, um, Carlos Street, uh, garbage data, literally my name in it. So I forgot I did that because I, was, I couldn't submit a form using their form without putting data into it, but I forgot I stuffed it. So we had like 20,000 users register over a weekend and um, all my information on it, and I was like, it was looking very suspicious. <laughs> if you watch that uh, TV show Silicon Valley where they fake the, the users, it was kind of like that. So um, the developers and the back end, front end developers were super pissed off because I did it. They, they were like a, they tried to be like Spotify engineering team and be these super cool dudes with their tribes and stuff. And uh, I just decided I'll do this in my free time and make it work. And ultimately the, it fell to the dark side because the uh, managing director was pissed because he had the CTO and the CFO like knocking on his door like the jerks being a jerk. I was doing what I do, right? So compromise. Least favorite word ever. Who likes to compromise? I told you I'm married to a Jewish wife. I'm a combative Irish man, you know, at heart. You know, we fight all the time. But you know, she's always going to win. Nobody likes to compromise. So we went back to that version two thing, and it was, you know, it wasn't a rip roaring success. We were still laughing, but, uh, you know, it was still cool. It was awesome. Uh, I finished with that company. They never got back to version three, and, uh, Oh, it's just a shame. But the point of it all is that you know, we try things, we try things quickly, we fail or succeed, and we move on. And I did it all with Frosmo, Hotjar, VWO, learning some Angular JS and some other crazy stuff. And yeah, it was fun. So my advice, do things, do things quickly, and just get on with it and don't get too bothered about it, but do it for your customer. And to wrap it up, you now know that 1999 Jeep Cherokees are awesome. You can get amazing ideas from your customers. And I gave you the inspiration for a million dollar idea. Didn't give you a million dollars. So that's it, guys. That's it. Thank you.